Hello everyone and welcome back to my video channel. Today I have something to share with you. It's a general purpose low noise wideband amplifier that's used for frequencies between DC and 2.2 gigahertz. Now the chip that is uh, used in this wideband amplifier down here is a BGA2869. For some time I've been using my tube radio here, my old BC348. I use it to um, calibrate uh, my frequency counters with WWV on 10 megahertz. Lately and in the past, the uh, reception has been pretty poor here. So I thought, well, maybe this wideband amplifier can raise the uh, signal input coming from the antenna to give me a decent uh, signal level so that uh, I don't get so much fading and, well, I'm still going to have the fading, but I don't get so, so much of a weak signal. It's hard to calibrate a, a 10 megahertz uh, secondary frequency standard uh, to WWV. So I thought I'd give this a try and it really worked out really nicely. So I just want to demonstrate that for you right now. So I'm going to hook this up. Um, and by the way, it has an input directly connects to the antenna. You can see it says RFN. And then it goes through this chip, through a blocking capacitor, through the amplification process, and uh, out through another blocking capacitor. And then uh, it goes uh, to the output here. So let's, uh, let's take it over here, and we're going to connect it up to the antenna and ground, and to our antenna, and we'll see what happens. Here. Okay, we're all connected up here. Uh, Got the alligator clips connected to the antenna in the ground and we're receiving a signal from WWV. It's not very strong on 10 megahertz and you can see the even the tuning meter isn't uh, registering the signal. This is an AVC tuning meter. Uh, it's not really an S meter but um, it, it functions more of a tuning meter and a signal indicator. So what I'm going to do is uh, turn it on here and let's see what happens. Uh, that little light should come on. There we go. Now we have a signal. Mind you, the station is still weak coming in this time of day. Okay, let's uh, turn it off once again. Back off. Very weak and back on again. Makes a big difference. So what I'm gonna do is uh, show you how uh, it works with my single sideband transceiver. It's an old tube radio. So we'll switch over there and see how it works. So let's turn it off and we'll be right back. Okay, we are connected up to my Swan 270 here. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna have you notice is that the uh, noise level on the S meter, let's take a look at that. This is with the uh, amplifier bypassed. So let's go ahead and we notice that we're getting about an S4 on the meter. Let's turn it on. Okay, now we have about an S6, an S6. Back again, turn it off an S4. Now that's noise in the background and you're probably thinking well it's just raising the noise level and it is and uh, but if there was a signal there it would also be increasing the level of the signal by the same amount. Okay we're on. Turn it off. Back on. He's barely peaking an S7 with it on. And now, barely peaking a S4. Back on. The noise level. Um, let's talk about that. Uh, when I switch this on, according to the S meter, I'm getting a 1 dB 
increase in noise. That's with the antenna disconnected, terminated with 50 ohms, and then uh, turning the amplifier on and off. The difference in the S meter is one dB. Well, nice thing about this battery is that uh, it's rechargeable right at the end here. And you just use a USB-C charger. And it doesn't take very long to charge this battery up. And boy, does it last a long time. Current demand, we're looking at about 25 milliamp years uh, on the current demand, plus a little bit more for the LED. The LED was an afterthought. Um, I kind of like it. It uh, lets me know if I forget to leave it on or, or it is on. And uh, I used a three position switch, so that's on. This off position means that there's no battery power, of course, powering the, uh, the amplifier. And also there's a break in the signal from here to here. And when you turn it this direction, uh, the amplifier is still off, but now we have a connection between this um, input and output. Let's take a look at this one and put it on the scope. That's, uh, let's put some power into it using my signal generator. And uh, we'll be right back and get that hooked up. Okay, we got it hooked up to the uh, signal generator and we're outputting into the scope at 14.2 uh, megahertz. We're putting out a signal of uh, 21 dBm. And uh, in the data sheet, 21 dBn is the maximum signal that you input uh, before the uh, amplifier starts to go into compression. That's, that's 30, minus 30 dB. Increase it. Watch what happens. There's 20. Starts to go into a square wave at, uh, we're at four, minus four dBm. That gets kind of ugly. That's uh, 14 dBm plus. So we go back down to plus 10. There's plus nine, eight, seven, six. There's zero dB. So let's go back down to where we get a nice sine wave. Okay, there's minus 23, go up to 22, 21. And at 20, we're starting to see it go into compression. And uh, you can see that the positive peak is starting to flatten off. So the, uh, the data sheet is pretty accurate, or actually accurate. It says that uh, minus 21 dB after that is uh, the point where it starts to go into compression. All right, so at uh, minus 21 dB coming into the little amplifier and going out to the oscilloscope, we have a peak-to-peak -peak reading of 1.64. So if we look at our little cheat sheet here, 1.64 volts is um, pretty close to... 8 to 9 dB, uh, plus 8 to 9 dB. So if you add the 21 dB to the 9 plus dB, you get 30 dB of gain. So that's roughly what the amplifier, what they claim here. They say that uh, it's a gain of 31.7 at 950 megahertz. Oh, by the way, you know how inexpensive these are? I got this from AliExpress for just about $2.50, I, and I got free shipping. I, I got four of them. And of course, the one thing you cannot do is you cannot transmit, key your transmitter, you will blow this thing up. <laughs> that little chip will just pop. And um, so it's only good for receivers. I have used it on a scanner, a handheld scanner, and it works well. I've also used it on my two meter handheld. Uh, the only thing is you just can't key it and it did improve the signal, but it's not practical to use on a handheld transceiver like a HT. So with that, folks, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the uh, video. I've got more to come. Uh, lots of fun projects here and I hope you tune back and we'll see you later. Thanks again and 73s and please subscribe.